For all my life, I've been watching my friend Carl Hanpeter miss free kicks in our soccer matches, either skying the ball way over the crossbar or curving the ball just outside the goalposts. But I've always wondered, what causes this curve to occur? Today we'll be discussing the Magnus Effect and Bernoulli's Principle and how each of the two make an impact on spherical balls in flight, featuring our lab rats, Jad, Nick, and Ben. We'll now break down this principle and how it impacts the flight of the ball, using this yoga ball for a large scale demonstration. Here we have the wind, notated by these two arrows, moving in this direction, and the ball is spinning in this direction and moving this way. There is a high pressure area created above the ball and a low pressure area created under the ball, and thus there is a downward force on the ball. The reason that a high pressure zone is created is because the friction of the air on the ball draws the air to the top of the ball. Yeah, to the top of the ball, and the air wants to move from high pressure to low pressure, thus pushing the ball down. We've come out to the Ox Field to see the, the effects of Bernoulli's principle on various sports. Ben, can you show us some of the best of your ability to pass the first shot? <laughs> because of the lacrosse ball's smooth surface and the fact that it only spins at around 2,000 RPM, it creates a smaller pressure differential than the other balls. This means that the force on the ball is very small, which means it curves much less than the other balls. Now we're gonna have Jad tested with soccer. Oh yes! The soccer ball spins less because it has a larger radius than the other two balls. But since the surface is a little rougher, it creates friction with the air, creating a larger pressure differential. This causes the ball to curve. Now we'll see how the Bernoulli principle can adversely affect the flight of the golf ball. The reason that the golf ball curves more than the soccer ball and the lacrosse ball is because it has a much higher spin rate, over 2,700 rotations per minute. Additionally, it has a very small radius and a much quicker acceleration than the other two. And the dimples on the surface of the golf ball allow it to maintain its spin through the air. With this equation, it is easily seen why the golf ball has a greater magnitude of curve than the soccer ball. Although the soccer ball has a greater radius, which is cubed, the over double speed of the golf ball has a greater impact. Furthermore, while the soccer ball spins at roughly 700 RPM, the golf ball spins around 2700 RPM and thus greatly increases the magnus force. Finally, these two clips were taken at similar times, therefore the density of air is constant. This equation also makes it seem like the lacrosse ball would have a large magnus force. However, the smooth nature of the ball's surface means that the ball does not get enough interaction with the air to create the pressure differential that causes the force. Now let's go back to the paper roll seen at the beginning of the video and discuss what's really going on. This is called the Magnus Effect. As seen in this diagram, the ball is spinning through the air and the air is flying around the ball from the front and the, to the back. The ball is spinning in the same direction as the airflow at the bottom of the ball, but opposite to the airflow at the top of the ball. This causes friction, which pulls the air under the ball to the back. The air above the ball comes to a stop, which causes an upward force on the ball. And because of Newton's third law, there is an equal and opposite force pushing the ball downwards. In simpler terms, ball pulls air up, air pulls ball down. So Edwin, can you give me a recap for Bernoulli's principle? Yeah, so as we can see here, the ball is moving towards the left with a counterclockwise rotation. The ball's motion against the wind on the top creates a high pressure zone, and the ball's motion with the wind creates a low pressure zone on the bottom. And as we know, force moves from high to low pressure, which means there's a force which is noted by this arrow downwards on the ball, which accelerates the ball. Now this force is determined by this equation here, which depends on the lift coefficient, the density of the air, the spin of the ball, the velocity of the ball, and the radius of the ball. Hey Edwin. You know, I'm really well informed on Bernoulli's principle. I can't wait to apply these concepts in my everyday life.
Thanks. <laughs> what? God! Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because. Damn!